有一座青草依依的山岗。The couple met on Cabbage's 2080 in 2010, when the guild was just a voice platform for music lovers to sing for fun. Ma Chenxi, or Tu Ge, was a government employee in a small Tibetan county in southwest Sichuan province. He Weina, or Yunjie, worked as a human resource officer in Beijing. Soon, Tu Ge decided to quit his job and came to Yunjie. Many people who yearn for love would see us as a beautiful picture. Many people who yearn for love would see us as a beautiful picture. They would feel warmth. Comparing the internet and the traditional way, what's the traditional model? It's one way. The audiences receive what the artists deliver to them, but our platform is interactive. You can see how many people are leaving your channel right this moment. Do they like you or not? You can get very instant feedbacks of how much you weigh in their heart, big or small, positive or negative. And this prompts you to plan what to do the next minute. The couple now has attracted more than two million subscribers, an average a hundred thousand visitors per day. Tu Ge and Yun Jie rent a detached house outside Beijing's North Six Ring Road, which is more than 40 miles from the city center. The couple says they had to move three times in a month because of their neighbor's complaints about noise. As a couple's fame is peaking on the internet, uninterrupted webcasting becomes crucial to maintaining a steady audience. The couple even carries mobile equipment for live webcasting with them wherever they travel. The couple signed a full contract with YY in April. That means both their online and offline activities will be managed by the company. The couple is one of the two dozen entertainers YY has selected to sign contracts out of the tens of thousands of web hosts, and they now even have professional composers writing songs for them. For the many other web hosts still earning their popularity online, their guilds are responsible for the content they produce. YY doesn't decide on the user-generated content. I think true creativity is everywhere, and everyone has creativity. But the challenge is how to manage such creativity. Nobody had ever defined what appropriate and inappropriate videos are, so we created our own set of definitions. For example, hosts are not allowed to stand during their webcasting. This is a very specific requirement. If you stand up, you will get a certain deduction of points. You have to sit to sing. This makes it easy to manage and measure. YY has a backstage program that scans all web hosts' programming every five seconds. The company also employs a 200-people team that checks the screenshots manually to ensure no content violates its rules. During the entire performance, no vulgar language is allowed, and in terms of clothes, we require the neckline cannot go lower than here. And if you are not a dancer, you cannot expose the lower part of your body. And if you are a dancer, you have to wear tights, whether you wear a skirt or pants. You cannot show bare legs. Not only guilds are transforming from online interest groups to actual agencies that have a traditional management structure. YY is also going offline by building a theater for a girl group he has packaged. And by going further, the company has spotted a new market: online education. We have many singers sing on the platform, but we later found that some teachers are even using our stuff. I ran into a teacher who teaches Japanese on our platform, and he makes four to five million RMB a month. So teachers have also spotted such an opportunity. We wonder if students would like to give teachers virtual classes. What about paying for taking classes? The company has established a special site for teachers to teach classes live. But YY's management says it would take time for the new business to grow.
So, Professor Jia, why why went public on the Nasdaq back in 2012?、Mm-hmm. The company chose to list in the U.S.、Uh, mostly because a lot of its investments are coming from foreign investors, and、right. Chinese government has very strict regulation when it comes to foreign capital trying to invest in a Chinese online gaming company.、Mm-hmm. Uh, but they have this detour; they have a way to go around it. It's called、right. VIE, variable variable interest entities. That's right. Explain to us how does that work? So far, if you look at the number of、uh, Chinese companies listed overseas, especially in the U.S., approximately two. Two to three hundred companies are currently using this VI structure.、Mm. So there are a lot of companies out there who are using it.、Um, so the whole idea of having the VI structure is that it allows foreign investors to invest in Chinese、uh, TMT startup companies before the IPO. And、um, let's take a look at this、um, mm-hmm. uh, stylized uh, illustration of how. We are able to set up a VI structure, and basically the VI structure contains two components. One component、right. is outside of China, and the other component is within the PRC border, so inside China.、They、have this onshore, offshore, offshore cooperation. Exactly. And、um, as a first step,、uh, what you do is you ask the foreign investors, you know, foreign venture capitalists,、mm-hmm. and the founder of this、uh, Chinese TMT company to go offshore, usually to Cayman Island or B,、uh, BVI, British Virginia Island, for obvious s- tax reasons. Exactly.、Right? Yeah. To set up a off. Offshore holding company,、mm. and so the money, the investment money, will actually get injected into this company.、Mm-hmm. And、um, the next step is for these local shareholder, the founder of、uh, the TMT company, to come back onshore, so back to China,、mm-hmm. say Beijing, to set up a local PRC entity. And、I、this、see. is the company、uh, that generates all the cash. This is the cash cow. This is also the company that holds the required operating license by the Chinese government.、Right. But you know,、uh, the precondition for having this license that This company has to be free of foreign investor, so that's、I、why、see. the foreigners cannot directly invest into this company and have、uh, shareholding, you know, rights in this company.、Um, and the third step is for this offshore holding company to also come back onshore and set up so-called a wufi, wholly foreign-owned enterprise or entity.、Mm. So you can think of this wufi as a shell company. Uh, it has nothing, so it's just a shell company,、right. and because it doesn't have the operating license, so、um, the offshore holding company can have 100% controlling, control. sh- direct control、mm-hmm. uh, over this company. And to complete this loop,、uh, the last step is for the Wufi to enter into a contractual relationship、mm-hmm. with this、uh, local PRC entity, so that the Wufi will provide all the intangible assets, you know, consulting service,、uh, some kind of service to、uh, this、uh, cash cow here, the local、right. PRC entity. In exchange, the local PRC entity will transfer part or all of its revenue and profit to this Wufi, and it gets outside of China and transferred to this offshore holding company. Well, it looks like the company's got a bright future. Once again, if you have an interesting business case to tell, make sure to email us at newmoney@cctv.com. Thanks for joining us this week on New Money, and thank you so much for your participation, Professor Jia. Always a pleasure to have you. you. But folks, we'll see you again next week.